Hello guys, welcome back to Connor Reads. What I'm going to be covering here is part four of The Lord of Chaos and Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time. There's going to be spoilers from the outset and throughout, so if you haven't read this book, um, pause the video, go read the whole book, come back and watch the video. We'd love to have you. Now, what I'm covering here is, uh, obviously it's part four, and I'm just stopped before chapter 27. We're going to be looking into some of Rand's family ties. We're also going to be looking into um, the battle of wits between Grendel and Samael. We're going to be looking into Egwin's love interests and how that's developed. And then finally, we're also going to be looking at a return to the most interesting city in the entire book, in my opinion. Let's hop into it. The first big thing that's happened in the section I've just read is that Tigraine, I believe it's pronounced like that, has been confirmed, so we think, as Rand's mother. Now this section, it was a bit confusing. There was a lot of like lineage thrown in and I had to read it a couple of times, but if I'm not mistaken, that would make Galad his half-brother. Now, if we're just looking at the crown and the throne of Andor, I don't see how this makes a big difference because it's always a woman who is the queen of Andor. However, my prediction is um, everybody already believes that Morghese is dead. So if for some reason it becomes believed that Elaine is dead or Elaine actually dies, which I don't think is going to happen, then one way for people to try and take succession, once this is public knowledge, which it kind of is now, is for them to marry Rand. So I could definitely see somebody trying to muscle in and marry him, maybe someone who is already in line for the throne in you know that direction. Now, Rand being half-brother with Galad is going to definitely be a difficult scenario. The reason being is Galad is now a white cloak, and he already has his difficulties as a character, and he always does what he believes is the right thing, and he'll never change his mind. So I can just see some big clashes with Rand and Galad in the future, and I can even see them potentially being big opponents. Maybe Galad becomes you know, um, the, the head of the White Cloaks somehow. Pedro Nile is either assassinated or dies or gives it up, which I doubt happens. But, you know, I could definitely see that happening and them being direct rivals. It would be quite poetic due to the fact that they're half-brothers, you know, and I feel like that's set up for a reason. Unless I've completely misread that chapter and got it wrong, um, I believe they have the same mother or father. Now, also, this means that someone called Luke, uh, I would guess it's Lord Luke or Luck, is Rand's uncle. Now, it said that he was sent into the Blight and no one ever saw him again. But I believe that's probably Slayer, who we met through Perrin, and Perrin uh, injured pretty heavily. Now, again, there's so much book to read through and my memory is a little hazy on some bits, but either Rand's mother or father was killed by somebody who looked like their spouse. And I just feel like he is gonna be involved in that somehow, in that storyline. I don't know how, but I think he's gonna be inserted into that storyline. And we're definitely gonna see some family on family action. I believe that Slayer is gonna obviously resurface and he's gonna be a big character moving forwards. Um, and I'm excited for it. We're gonna learn more about Rand's history and Rand's past. And I feel like there's a whole section and period of time there where so much must have happened. And we're gonna learn more about it, which I'm you know, fired up about. Something else that happened in the chapters I just read is Rand had to enforce the no murdering rule and he had one of the Aiel hanged, somebody that he knows well. I think that's really important. It shows like a fair and level ground for everybody that is uh, following Rand. However, there is a big problem. And I think the big problem that's happening is Rand's support is kind of crumbling around him. Like he's built up this support really, really quickly. And I know that, you know, the final battle is coming, so he does need to build it up quickly. But so much of his support is built on fear. And he needs to change that somehow. It needs to be built on respect because already the Aes Sedai have come. The Aes Sedai who have come as, you know, and they're going to offer um, an escort back to Tarvalon. And I think it's going to be, you know, whether he gives consent or not is their goal. And all, what they're already doing is locating people who aren't overly happy or have been displaced by Rand's rule. And essentially they're telling them, you know, there would be a big power vacuum if he wasn't here. Like you would have an opportunity to grow your holdings and become a very important person. And guess what, if that does happen, who put you there? The Aes Sedai, so all these people will have debts to the Aes Sedai as well. And it's a classic Aes Sedai move, you know, as I've always said, they're frustrating characters and a lot of them are very, you know, morally gray to say the best, but intelligent and cunning, yeah, for sure. 
Something that's been a theme of this book is Luz Theron and Moiraine being both in Rand's head. Luz Theron in a more physical sense and Moiraine more in a sense of her teachings have really rubbed off. And, you know, that's just heartwarming to read. Like, I think she was such an underrated character when she was alive, even by me as the reader, because everyone that I was reading, their perspective, were frustrated or hated her for some reason. But now I look back, she's really been one of the MVPs of the entire book so far. So I'm glad she's still there in that capacity. Now Rand is flitting or traveling between two different cities and in one of them he set up a school and I know he's done this up and down the uh, you know the land as well and in this school we saw some amazing physical scientific inventions. We see what's like a crude start to Bunsen burners to hot air balloons, telescopes, even airplanes and something steam powered if I wasn't mistaken it was described quite vaguely. I don't think we would have such a deep look into this school if they're not going to discover something that's going to be really useful later and i thought long and hard on it and i know the illuminators at this point are really struggling and they're always brought up through the book um so i know that they a lot of their like practices have been shut down and there might even only be one left and a lot of them are looking for work i feel like potentially um just like humans in the modern day they are going to figure out how to use this gunpowder as weapons and bombs and really change the game and, and have the regular Joe be able to push back on magic. That would be a cool development and it would be interesting to see um, how the magicians uh, that we have deal with that. Now we also had a scene with Herod who is a very confusing man and I don't think of myself as very intelligent but I do think that if I read something two or three times I should be able to at least understand it. His prediction, and uh, well not so much a prediction, his understanding of what Rand asked him was so confusing. Essentially it was something about how the Wheel of Time is obviously a wheel and it goes around and the Dark One's prison has been patched and then broken open again, but his prediction was that it wasn't made broken into and patched and therefore his prison should be able to be made whole again on the Wheel of Time. And I wish I had some kind of understanding or prediction, but I'm just confused. Like, I just think, I think it just means that in some way, shape or form, he should be able to re-imprison the Dark One, which is, you know, I hope so. Moving on from Rand and on to the Forsaken. These are some of my favorite chapters. These guys are so interesting. Um, in one chapter, we had Samael send a messenger to Rand, and I thought he was showing some weakness. Essentially, he was asking Rand, hey, can we have a truce? You know, we'll battle each other at the final battle. I don't want to fight you, essentially. And Rand told him where to go with that. And then his messenger died, which was real scary. But I think it showed Samael as quite weak. However, the next scene we get with the Forsaken is Samael and Grendel. And Samael had kind of lost the exchanges previously. Grendel had outsmarted him. However, he manages to convince Grendel that he is going to be the chosen one, also known as Nabliss. And she believes him. So he convinces her that she needs to tell him, Samael, where the other Forsaken are. And we find out that Masima is in the White Tower, which is interesting. Um, but looking at that storyline, I think maybe Samael hasn't given up on his deal with Rand. And I think what he's going to do is come back with more leverage. And he's essentially going to say to Rand, hey, listen. Give me the truth that I want. I don't know if he'll stick to it, but give me the truth that I want. And here, this is where all of the Forsaken are. Because he already knows where Massima is. He already knows where uh, Grendel is, obviously. And if he can find out where, uh, is it Semerage and uh, Demandred are? If he can give Rand, um, you know, the locations of the others, then I think that'll be a better bargaining tool. But I don't think that Rand will take that bargain, but we'll see. You know, you got to give it to him for uh, trying his best. My next uh, section that I read through was a lot of Egwin. I just have to say, I, Egwin is the least likable of all of the main characters now. Like, I'm falling less and less in love with her. And I would even say I'm kind of indifferent to her right now. It seems like she's still pushing for the same goals as everyone else. But I don't know. She's like, she's cut off from the group. She hasn't really interacted with any of them. And all of her and Rand's interactions are difficult like she's so offensive so often and the last time that she met with Nynaeve and Elaine like she again was offensive as 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 she is most of the time so yeah I'm really struggling to like Egwene right now we have another really abrupt relationship so she bumps into Gawain and um, the prediction was that she's either going to kneel to him 
or Gam was going to break her neck, if I'm not mistaken. And someone really kindly put that in the comments, and I thank you in the last video. Um, I mean, technically, when she bumped into him, I think she did fall on her knees, but I feel like it would have been you know, a bigger deal made out of that. So I'm interested to see where that storyline goes. However, the romance sucks again, and Robert Jordan is a, um, you know, a serial offender when it comes to this. But yeah, I didn't feel the romance at all. And I do have some thoughts on how that could go sour. So Rand just had an assassina assassination, tough word to say, attempt on his life, as all assassinations tend to be. Um, and it was very obviously white cloaks. Now, unless somebody is framing the white cloaks, which I don't think they are, um, Rand is obviously going to declare all white cloaks as evil. And as it stands, Galad is a white cloak, which is interesting. And Gawain is not, I don't believe. But I do think that that will drive a wedge in between Gawain and uh, into Egwene as well. And then obviously the Aes Sedai are planning something that will um, be not to Rand's taste. So like they're going to have a wedge driven between them. And I just don't know if Egwene's going to continue to choose the right side anymore. I think her morals are a little bit skewed and I just don't trust her to make the right choices anymore. So I think that maybe, I hate to say it, but I just feel like Egwin, I don't know, maybe she doesn't, maybe she swaps sides or something, something like that, potentially. It's a bold prediction. Maybe not swapping sides. Ooh. Um, I think she's gonna turn into a gray character maybe. That'll do. I'm not going to say she's a traitor. Because something I was thinking about as well was like, I was thinking back to the very first book. And the first book has like, I need to reread the first chapter actually. And it has like Egwin noticing all the Dark Ones, Ravens looking at the boys. And the, the more I look back at it, the more I'm like, why would he put that in there? Like that's such a strange thing for him to throw in from Egwin's perspective as well. Like noticing all of those. I don't really know what to make of it. Maybe I should go back and read that chapter um before i move on to the next book but yeah i just got a funny feeling about that so moving back to rand so rand a big problem that he has right now is he doesn't have the respect of the people and i don't think it's just his problem i think there's two issues number one people fear him too much he needs to find a way to build that respect up and i know it's tough because he's on a time limit but he's got to figure that out he needs more people who are actually tied to him because they believe in the cause rather than they're just you know, they believe in them not being destroyed by magic, essentially. And the second thing is, he actually does need his team to step up a little bit. You know, Matt and Perrin, they need to step up and become the leaders of people that we know that they can be. You know, Matt has so much potential and Perrin's already attacking some of his potential as well. Like, if he had those guys leading large factions or leading big amounts of people, like, those are people he could essentially trust um and wouldn't be able to be turned i would hope so anyway so i know they need to step their game up so does elaine and naive with regards to you know wrestle some control like i know they're trying they're probably doing a much better job than than especially matt is you know um but yeah matt needs his his two rivers people to pull through for him essentially sorry rand rand needs his two rivers people to full, pull through for him and just make a difference like He's doing a lot of this on his own and it's difficult because although he has Luz Theron in his head and he has Moy Rain who spent endless hours with him, he's still a young man. So he needs those guys to step up and create some respect and love for him in his faction or just lead the people so that, you know, things don't get splintered, which I could definitely see happening. Two more things to go. So one... Um, we had this strange prediction that the key to finding the bowl, and I assume that's the bowl that they saw in Teleram Riyadh, um, with like the weather inside of it, is to find the person who's like not here anymore. And that's a tough one. Like I really don't have too many ideas on that. The only people that we know that aren't here anymore are Moiraine and like Luce Theron kind of is a character who's not here but is here. But obviously there's thousands and thousands, if not millions of characters who are dead that we just didn't meet who's not there anymore and I, that's the only thing I can really think of it being so yeah I'm a bit stumped on that one I do think the bowl is going to be useful for the weather you know that seems to be foreshadowed and, and quite um, obvious but yeah I'm not too sure what that could be talking about and finally we return to Shadar Logoth with ogres as well how exciting so we meet um, more ogres and it's cool because it was such like a homely storyline like they want to go and get our boy and bring him back which is really really cool 
Um, now, I didn't really realize that he would die if he stayed out of the steading for a really long time. So I'm glad they're going to get him, even if they just bring him back for a little while, which it doesn't sound like he's going to get away with going back for just a little while. Um, but yeah, it was exciting to go to Shadow Logov. Obviously, we lose someone. I think her name was Leanne. And that's going to come back to bite them big time. I don't think you just lose people in Shadow Logov. And we were only there for a short period of time, but... Like, it's such an interesting place. I don't know why I'm so attracted to Padan Fane and Shadar Logoth from, like, a curious standpoint and from, like, I want them to be in the story more. But it's just so strange. Like, it's such a great area where they clearly aren't, like, subservient to the Dark One, the Dark One's forces, if not him himself. You know, he seems a bit above that. But his forces fear that place and are so worried about it. And I just want more to come from there. I think we're going to see Leanne in the future. You know, it's too, too weird that she just disappears and no one hears from her and that's it. We like leave her there. So my prediction for that would be essentially maybe we see her come out as like a Padan Fane kind of character. Maybe Mordoth jumps in, can jump into like, you know, several people. And I might be way off because, you know, that section is so confusing still. So uh, we will see what happens. As everyone says to me in the comments, I will read and find out. And that's it for my prediction so far. I think, you know, I'll maybe do two more videos from this book. Um... So I'm going to read larger amounts before the next uh, video. And then also there will be a final one, of course, a recap. Um, but something I said in the last uh, video is once I finish the next book, I would like to do like a midpoint awards for the things that have happened so far. So um, a ton of awesome people have thrown in their, um, their categories and I've seen some amazing ones. If I decide to do your category, obviously, um, I'll give you a shout out as well because I'm so appreciative of you guys. But yeah, if you have any cool ideas, throw them in. Um, if you've enjoyed this, like and subscribe and uh, send it to some other Wheel of Time as I'm sure they would love to watch somebody ramble on. I know I love watching people talk about all the worlds that I'm really into as well. Um, other than that, I hope you're having a good holiday season and I will see you next time.